guys and welcome back to fashion attack today is the last episode that i'm gonna do about the polyester fiberglass uh resin series and we're gonna make the candy cube coffee tables they are so cool look at this one over here they're such a design piece and we are gonna have and we are gonna figure out how to make it with some simple wood and pouring yeah no brushes no nothing just pouring the resin on top. Before we even start, I wanna spend a few seconds thanking you for all the comments that you left me and all the amazing ideas that I could use for the next tutorial. Actually, Jack is the one that gave me the idea for the next one. He told me, why not doing a chandelier? And I'm not so good with lights. I did maybe one or twice, but not like technological heavy connection stuff. So I decided to take it as a challenge and I met this gorgeous chandelier over here. And that's what we're gonna do next time. I was almost forgetting. We need to thank for this video and SLG. I don't know how to pronounce her name, but she's a follower from Malaysia. How dope is it that you guys are looking at this videos from there? For this video, she told me to make it on Instagram. Don't forget to send me your notifications every time of what you want to make me next. Comment here, comment on Instagram. Just send them to me, whatever you want. What you're gonna need is five pieces of wood, some polyester, paper tape, glue for wood, and some coloring for the polyester and a spray paint. Plus hammer and wood nails that I decided totally last minute. Let's talk some math. I wanted to make a cube, so perfectly identical sizes on every side of the cube. I wanted 50 times 50, so what I did was buying 48 centimeter 0.5 because that's the amount of 50 minus the depth of the wood that you're gonna use. That's how to know which dimensions to buy. Every time you're gonna overlap one piece of wood on the raw edge, as you see here on the side, one raw edge stays outside. And you're gonna do exactly the same things over and over for the four angles of the wood. You don't need clips and all this expensive things. I'm just using tape and it's good enough. And only the top wood that is gonna be the one that is 50 centimeters times 50 is the one that is gonna overlap on top. <laughs> now we let it dry. As I was looking at my super amazing and perfect cube, I started to get some complexes and started thinking, what if the glue is not enough? So that's the moment that I took out some nails for wood. It means that the head is a lot tinier and it's gonna just squash inside the wood. You're not gonna see it to make it even tighter. We got this. Now that it's all nice and dry, we're gonna go inside. I flipped it upside down and gonna put silicone inside all the edges that connect the wood so that the resin or the polyester is not gonna pass through inside. Super simple step. We just put it on every single corner, press it inside with our finger, and then we are done. Then you're gonna spray paint the entire block in the same color that you wanna cover it with the resin. We are totally ready for the exciting experiment part of this tutorial. We're gonna go and build a frame for this cube. Normally you would have to build the frame with some wood, but that's super expensive, super time consuming. So as I saw that people do in crack kitchen countertops, we're just gonna frame it with some tape, make several layers of that, hold it very tight, and pour the resin inside. And here we go again with my I'm so cheap solutions. <laughs> this is gonna cost you so much less money and so much less effort. It's super easy. Everybody, literally everybody can do this. Just go around three times with your tape and you basically build a shield where the resin cannot drop out of. And then you just pour it all inside. To create our mixture, we have to first of all shake, shake, shake the polyester or the resin. After that, the quantities is for every 100 grams of polyester, you have to put two grams of hardener. There you put it inside and obviously, it depends how much thick you want your layer to be on top. It's gonna be enough one or two drops of color to make it very shiny and bright. You just pour it all inside and then there's two techniques. One, just move it around with a little stick if you did not drop too much quantity. It's enough to wetten the wood and then it's just gonna dry and spread all over in the right areas. Yes, I am absolutely aware that this is the best project and the most smooth thing I've ever made in my life. Okay, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth thing that I want to say is that this is amazing. I needed to say it at least six times. Look how freaking smooth it is. If my phone falls inside, I'm gonna kill myself. Okay, look at this. It's so shiny and smooth. There's no air bubbles at all. I can't wait to do the other layers. 
we go ahead and remove our tape and finally can find out what happened underneath. As you can see, I had two millimeters, I would say, of uh, resin poured inside. I decided for all the other layers to actually add a bit more material, so I passed from three glasses to five glasses of pouring because it made it thicker and I thought it looked even cooler. Only on the edges where it was touching the tape, it came out a little bit greasy, but it was super easy to sand it off. It just was like chick, 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 and it came out. Now we're gonna have to do the same thing on all the other edges. So turn around your cube, pass your tape, and then we do the pouring again. Spread it over the wood and you're done. So, I don't know that just a few seconds passed for you, but actually I just flew to Cyprus, stayed three days there, posted some butt out pictures, and tried to fly back, got stuck there, because after 72 hours you need to take a corona test, got a negative corona test, flew to Israel, got another negative corona test to get out of the airport, flew back home, went to CrossFit, that's why I'm so ready, and now we're ready to do the other layers. What? Technique number two. In case you want to add more thickness of your resin, then I suggest you not to use a stick to move it around, but just to shake your cube around till it go and wet every single corner. I guess this channel is more learning from my mistake than actually tutorialing you with something. So this is what happens if you add a second layer of coating after that the first one didn't dry completely. I thought it was missing some thickness. It wasn't big enough the layer, so I added it on top and you can see it doesn't come out well. So if you want to add an extra layer and you didn't do it enough, it's fine. Just wait for it to dry completely and then do the process again. Don't do it in between. It's not going to work out. Are you ready for the last pouring? Turn around your cube so to hide the ugly corner that I did. Nobody's going to notice it. And we do the last pouring. We're finished. The table is finally dry, we took a shower, we brushed our eyebrows and we're ready to see the results. But before doing that, like always, let's see the things that I would have done differently. Honestly speaking, this time I did not make too many disasters. The only thing that you really, really should follow is never make two pourings, one at a few seconds or maybe a minute of distance from the other one because the pouring is gonna look disgusting. The other one is half dry. If you need to add material, wait for it to dry completely and then do the second one on top when it's completely dry. Do not forget to subscribe and to come next week because we are gonna make this beautiful, super expensive chandelier that I can't wait to challenge myself with. And now let's go and see the result. So guys, this is the moment where I lie to you and tell you that I have secretly done two more cubes in other two colors to show you how cool they could look. But then I'll regret the lie and I'll confess it. This is only Photoshop and I wish I wasn't so lazy and I did make two more of them because they look so cool. This is the original one and it's the final result. It actually came out so good, so smooth. The pouring is the absolutely the best and easiest technique I've ever tried since today. And I'm totally gonna try it for more kind of experiments. Uh, I think I should do the other two blocks. They just look too cool together. But here is the final one and I think it looks amazing. Guys, hope to see you next time and don't forget to send me all your amazing ideas. I can't wait to do them.